Hi, Bob. How are you? So what Bob normally does is he takes a minute or two to talk about how we got to choosing this topic and where we think uh, the, the chips fall in the argument. So let's start, Bob, with, with the side that's arguing uh, for the motion, and this motion is an against. It's a double negative. They, are, uh, they say the U.S. does not need a strong dollar policy. And is that basically the same as saying no policy is needed, or does it mean a, they're asking for a weak U.S. dollar? Well, I think what they're, they're saying is that the price of the dollar is a price like any other. It's determined by supply and demand. Uh, the dollar is, is strong right now against uh, the yen and against the pound. It's weak against the euro. And this is just uh, normal economic forces uh, operating. Uh, they're probably going to say that at times like this, uh, with the U.S. economy weak, a weaker dollar is actually helpful because it makes imports more expensive, makes exports cheaper, and therefore encourages domestic uh, growth and domestic employment. Uh, so they would argue that, uh, that uh, we should just let the dollar go where it goes. And uh, I think there's a, a point here, which is that the government can control interest rates or they can control the price of the currency, but they cannot do both. So a strong dollar policy is essentially a, uh, uh, an open mouth policy, and it's an open mouth with no teeth. All right. And on the other side of the argument, the team that's arguing for a strong dollar, what do you expect to hear from them? Well, I expect to hear from them uh, the importance of the role of, uh, of the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency. Uh, when we run these enormous uh, fiscal deficits for the government and trade deficits, in order for them to be sustainable, foreign uh, central banks have to be willing to hold the overwhelming majority of their reserves in the form of U.S. dollars. And if we pursue a policy that's indifferent to the value of the dollar or worse, deliberately tries to trash the dollar, uh, they're going to lose confidence the result will be rising interest rates in the United States, an economic slowdown, and uh, disaster for uh, the U.S. government, which has so much debt outstanding. So there's, there's actually a lot of track record here. There's a lot of history that both sides can cite, which, which makes the point that this has been going on for a long time. So why bring this to the stage tonight? Well, I think tonight uh, we were stimulated to do this in part by uh, the partnership that we have with the Richmond Center at, uh, at uh, Columbia. It's a joint venture of their law and business schools. And we, we collectively felt that this was very timely. Uh, you can't pick up a newspaper without seeing some kind of uh, discussion about uh, the, quote, artificial strength of the U.S. dollar versus that of our biggest trading partner, China's renminbi. So there's a lot of talk about trashing the dollar relative to, to China's currency. And then uh, the, the efficacy of the federal government or the Fed's policy on uh, printing money, uh, quantitative easing, is, uh, is again a very hot policy debate right at the moment. Uh, it's clearly fueled a, uh, a stock market rally. It's fueled a turnaround in the housing market, all of which are good things. But query whether in the long run it's going to result in a uh, decline in the value of the dollar. And does that really matter? Well, we have four debaters who are raring to go on this. Their, their opinions, I know from talking to them, are very strong. And they're a little bit revved up. So let's bring them out to the stage. Indeed. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. Thanks.